everyone welcome back in this video i plan to break down the new 50 series of nvidia graphics cards as well as a new consumer-based supercomputer it's the first of its kind this is all super exciting stuff let's dig in and i'll share everything you need to know all right so this here has a lot of people talking apparently the 5070 matches the same performance as last year's 4090 uh, this is a very big deal as the 5070 is only $550 versus the what the 4090 was around 1600 or so dollars. Um, so think about that scale. We're about a third of the price now for about the same exact performance. So how they're able to do this is NVIDIA has rolled out their new Blackwell architecture. Um, this brings higher efficiency per watt and per core compared to last year's ADA Loveless architecture. So this allows for mid-tier GPUs like the 5070 to deliver performance comparable to previous high-end cards. A couple other noteworthy things about the 5070 in particular before we dig into other models announced here, um, there is enhanced tensor cores. So Blackwell uses fifth gen tensor cores which drastically improves the AI-driven processes like deep learning super sampling, which is DLSS for short. Um, there is also improved ray tracing cores. The fourth, tr uh, the fourth gen ray tracing cores in Blackwell are more powerful and efficient, allowing the 5070 to handle ray tracing tasks better than even the 4090 in some cases. On the flip side of that, you know, the 5070 may not be the best in all use cases when comparing directly against the 4090. For things like multi-monitor 4K setups or 8K gaming, the 4090 still might be better in terms of performance. For memory intensive applications like 3D modeling or simulations, again, the 4090 might be superior there as well. And for hardcore overclocking and sustained high load tasks, Again, the 4090 may outshine the 5070. All right, so at this point at CES, we got some of the pricing information as it comes to the newest models of the 50 series. So taking a look at this here, we do see that they are mentioning the AI Tops benchmark, which we'll quickly dig into here in just a moment. But as it relates to the 5090, we see this at 1999. The RTX 5080, 999, the 5070 Ti, 749, and the RTX 5070, 549. So AI tops are tera operations per second. Um, they measure how quickly the GPU handles AI tasks like DLSS, ray tracing, and generative AI workloads. So they're useful for workloads relying heavily on AI enhancements, such as gaming um, with DLSS, rendering, or AI productivity tools. Uh, but however, I mean, for most gamers, this number is more of a, a marketing number, to put it simply. NVIDIA has improved from their 40 series. As taking a look at the numbers from the 40 series, we see that the 50 series is about double in nearly every per performance metric here when you compare, you know, model to model. So if you're looking at the 5090, you know, the 4090 has about half of the tops listed here. Um, so that's kind of helpful there just to see how they improved in this specific metric. Um, but it is interesting how they highlighted AI tops here while also showcasing the price. All right, taking a look at some of the key metrics when it comes down to the new 50 series, um, taking a look at, you know, the CUDA core metric. Um, CUDA core is essentially parallel processors responsible for handling um, gaming graphics, AI computations, and rendering more cores generally means better multitasking for demanding applications. The 5090, we see this has 21,760 CUDA cores compared to the 4090, which had about 16,384, which is about 33% more. Um, we also see that the 5080 has about 10,000, 5070 Ti about 9,000, and then the 5070 about 6,000. As it comes to the VRAM, or video memory component, um, 
VRAM is dedicated memory on the GPU that stores textures, models, and game data for rendering. More VRAM essentially allows for better performance and high resolution gaming and 3D rendering. The 5090, we see that this has about 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 RAM. Um, the big thing here is GDDR7 versus the 4090 and the 40 series, which had GDDR6X. Um, so slightly different series coming out here with the 50 series, but the 5090, again, 32 gigabytes, 5080, 16 gigabytes, 5070 Ti, 16 gigabytes and then the 5070 12 gigabytes um we do see that the 5090 32 gigabytes is ideal for professional tasks like 3d rendering while mid-range models like the 5070 ti and 5070 are really only minor upgrades from their predecessors Taking a look at ray tracing cores, the 50 series um, is on 4th gen, while the 40 series was on 3rd gen. Um, the 4th gen cores provide better efficiency and performance in ray traced games, noticeable in flagship and high-end models. Taking a look at memory bandwidth, um, this measures how fast the GPU can read and write data to its memory high, higher bandwidth improves 4K and 8K gaming performance. The 50 series is on the GDDR7 yet again. Um, and we're taking a look at the 5090, which is on 512 bits. Um, the 5080, 256 bits, 5070 Ti, 256, and then the 5070, 192 bits. Um, comparing this to the 40 series, um, the 5090 specifically, you know, the 512 bits is a pretty significant upgrade as the 4090 had about 384 again compared to 5090 which has 512. On in terms of the smaller cards like the 5070 to the 4070 we do see that the 192 bit number stays the same there. Taking a look at boost clock speed. So boost clocks determine how fast the GPU can process data under load Higher clocks mean better performance, but also can increase power consumption. Um, the 50 series, specifically the 5090, we see a 2.41 gigahertz number, 5080, 2.62, 5070 Ti, 2.45, and then the 5070, 2.51. Um, clock speeds had not really significantly increased between generations. Um, the 50 series is focusing more on core and memory improvements, as it seems. The 5090 delivers up to 50% better performance in titles like Cyberpunk 2077 compared to the 4090. And then for mid-range options, the 5070 Ti matches or slightly exceeds the 4080. Um, with the introduction of GDDR7, 4th uh, gen ray tracing, and 5th gen tensor cores, the 50 series is better suited for AI workflows rendering and data heavy tasks. So while the 50 series offers a clear technical advantage, especially at high end mid tier upgrades or high end uh, mid tier upgrades feel less substantial. So when we're comparing these older models like the 40 series, like 4070 to the 5070, um, the upgrade like it's kind of there and it does make sense if you if you're in the market for a card now and you don't have a 40 series already, the 50 series, especially the 5070, offers some pretty substantial value. And of course, if you're someone that likes to stay up on top of, you know, the latest GPU, the 5090 does offer some pretty substantial upgrades here. The 50 series is expected to roll out January 30th, so just a few weeks away until we start seeing them hit store shelves. Another thing that was unveiled at NVIDIA's CES event yesterday evening is Project Digits. Project Digits is big, and if you stayed around, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to grow around here, and I am trying to improve, so thank you so much for sticking around. Let me know if you have any feedback down below. Sorry for that quick call out there, but um, here is Project Digits. This is a essentially a consumer supercomputer. Um, that is expected to roll out very soon here in the next few months. They are saying May 2025. I will say it's $3,000.
but what makes this thing stand out is its performance. It delivers up to one petaflop of AI performance and supports models with up to 200 billion parameters. Two digit systems can connect via NVLink C2C cables to handle 405 billion parameter models. It has a very efficient design. Based on what we're seeing here, it looks like a Mac Mini. So it may actually just fit in the palm of your hand and it runs on a standard power outlet featuring 128 gigabytes of unified memory and four terabytes of NVMe storage. So the thing is super quick. It allows developers to prototype locally and deploy models on NVIDIA DGX Cloud or other data center infrastructures using the same Grace Blackwell architecture. So this small little compact device is a AI supercomputer to the desktop. Um, so very big deal here. It's for widespread adoption in the AI community. It supports large scale AI projects without reliance on cloud only solutions. And at only $3,000, it makes this thing a cutting edge AI device attainable for small teams and individuals. Again, we expect Project Digits to roll out here in May 2025, and I think it could redefine how AI is developed and scaled across industries. That is everything I have for us today. That covers NVIDIA's CES announcements. There are a couple of other things that I may do separate videos on. They did talk a little bit about language models and what they're doing in that space and also what the future looks like with AI in terms of robotics. Um, so robotics, they are saying, are going to be key here moving forward, and that's kind of what they're going to start building around. But that is it today. I will come out with a new video very soon as CES is still ongoing, and there's a lot of very exciting things being covered. Apologize for my hair sticking up. But thank you all so much for watching. Take care.